Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming into this technological session. Um, my name is Daniel. Um, we're going to kind of show a use case um, of using the Wikibase software that uh, Christos was talking about. So I will be talking about the, the context and some of the challenges um, in organizing such a big project. Um, then uh, Mate is going to say a few words how we're trying to get a lot of new content to the Slovak Wikipedia. And then Christos will say a few uh, closing words. So, um, I'm going to start with a super non-technical context of what we are doing. In 2020, we made a feasibility study trying to find out why Spotify was not recommending Slovak music within Slovakia for Slovak people, which is contradicting what we think about recommendations and recommender engines. And to cut the short story, we found out that the usual problem is that um, for smaller languages and smaller countries, there's just not enough reliable data so that algorithms can learn from. So we wanted to start a project where we will disseminate correct machine-readable information about the cultural heritage of countries. Um, so we wanted to understand what might go wrong and we stumbled upon this very cool website. It's called Forgotify. Um, it's an Australian app which is playing music that has never been played on Spotify. Not even their brothers, sisters, daughters. <laughs> and some of the music uh, that I first stumbled upon was from the 70s, Turkish psychedelia, and uh, the cat was jumping around when it heard it. So it was like, not for everybody's taste, but some of them were like award-winning jazz musicians, and just their data was incorrect. So, you know, if you have a sound recording, but something gets mislabeled, misspelled, the artist or whatever, nobody's going to find it. And this was a very prevalent problem. We found out that in the Czech and Slovak Republic, 55% um, of the uses of popular music, so we were not talking about amateurs, we looked at the 600 most streamed songs in these territories, had royalties missed or royalties coming late. Again, the reason is data problems. So if you are in music and Spotify or YouTube, somebody plays your music, usually you get like a fraction of a cent. Of course it adds up, but you know, you're not going to hire an engineer to fix your data problems for 10 euros. So, so this requires a kind of a collective solution. And in the US, the, lab, uh, the, the Congress passed an act and created an entity which was dealing with just these kind of data problems that returned after 18 months, $424 million for independent artists mainly. So this problem usually affects small companies in small countries because if you have like 15 million recordings in the system, then you probably have an IT team to fix a metadata problem. If you have 300 and you're handling your data in Excel and something goes wrong, well, probably it's more expensive to solve it than, uh, than the money that you can get. So we wanted to persuade the European music um, stakeholders that you know, we really have to fix the data of European music because we believe that a similar amount is being lost for small independent companies uh, because of this problem in Europe. And there was a European uh, Union uh, initiative to start the European Music Observatory. The European Union and the UN maintain so-called observatories, which are a metaphor to, I don't know, Isaac Newton's observatory. So currently an observatory is not necessarily a building that is viewing at stars and celestial events but it is like an institution that is collecting systematically data about something. So there are observatories about biofuels, there are, there's a European observatory of homelessness. And so, so we applied to these uh, 
preparatory tender that we would like to build the European Music Observatory with uh, open data and within sight of these problems that I was uh, talking about. And we won this tender and started a project called Open Music Europe. Um, there is the website. And so I told you that we started from a feasibility study there with the demonstration, then we signed a cooperation agreement with the Ministry of Culture in Slovakia, and eventually we are almost ready to see things happening. So, of course, this timeline, I think, if somebody would follow our path, would be shorter, significantly shorter. I don't think that anybody was trying to do something as comprehensive in Europe as we tried. And there were a lot of political and other uh, um, bottlenecks. And, and, of course, we had a COVID pandemic, which really slowed things down. But, um, but we were aiming for something very ambitious. And so what we actually do, um, to connect back to the topic of Wikipedia and Wikidata, um, we are building a comprehensive uh, database where we are retrieving information about every music ever made in the territory of the current Slovak Republic. Um, from copyright registers, so organizations that collect royalties on behalf of artists, hopefully from every public library of the Slovak Republic that has music sheets or recordings, the Slovak Music Center, and the Music Fund of Slovakia, which supports artists and also publishes their sheets. So there's a lot of, lot of private databases that we're consolidating um, into a Wikibase instance. So here is why we found Wikibase such a, a, a good solution. Um, I could go into technical details, and if there will be questions, I can say a lot of qualities why we think that Wikibase is good for this purpose, but not only that it's open source, so it has certain technical features that I think make it very suitable for the job. And we started to put into a self-hosted Wikibase all this information. Now why we are doing this in a self-hosted way and in a very complicated way, we actually are running several Wikibase instances on the same server. Why? Uh, this is, I think, uh, what will show the novelty of our approach. Each of the organizations who are feeding us with data have different licenses to use the data. So if you're a music information center and you have data, you have a public mandate to disseminate it to the public. So there's usually not a big problem to put it on uh, Wikidata or Wikipedia or anywhere else because that is the role why you have the database. However, if you are a collective rights management agency that connects, um, collects royalties for musicians, or companies of musicians, or often, um, heirs of musicians who don't live anymore, but somebody inherited their rights. This information, per se, is protected by the European General Data Protection Rules. So we have some users who have a legal mandate to protect the data, the others to disseminate the data. So I will speak a few more things about this, but we keep this data in different instances, and whenever we get an approval to collate them, then we put them into a public Wikibase, which we would like to put actually on the cloud for several reasons. I think it would be the best way to put it there, because it will be, anyway, a place of federating new knowledge, which can be also a candidate to be placed on Wikidata. Um, and then we have another aspiration. I had very interesting conversations about this yesterday, but we don't really know how to do it yet, and we would be very open for suggestions. We know that several technical teams have been trying to build automatically from Wikidata structured data machine-generated articles. Now, before 
you are getting <laughs> scared that we want to pollute uh, Wikipedia with machine generated articles. I mean, that's not the use case we're having in mind. But we would like to generate simple preliminary articles so that musicologists, music educators who are not so familiar with data can actually review the content before we give it, for example, to a Wikipedia. And also potentially to, to pre-prepare pre these new articles in several languages. So what we would like to do is that we would like to prepare good quality information to get onto Wikipedia and Wikidata and preferably if the artist reaches the notability criterion of a certain Wikipedia then it would also get an article. And the reason why we would like to put the rest in Wikibase Klaus because, because it has a much lower notability criteria. So Maybe we have a Slovak artist who is not notable yet, but we already have her data. It is there, it is growing, and when it gets notable, well, you can decide any time that you have an article for her. We can actually measure notability in many ways. And so, so this, is, this is the kind of the workflow that we are having in mind. And uh, how we get started, so, I had a, I actually told you yesterday about this. Uh, this, this is a, a table that actually scared away a partner, but it also brought us in contact with other partners with whom we're working. So what we did is that we checked the public database. I will name them without shaming because they have reasons to say no, but you can actually read it, so why hide it? Uh, the Music Information Center of Lithuania has a public database, a very good quality database. And we cross-checked that database against Wikidata, Wikipedia, Music Brains and other sources to highlight how we could improve by actually just cross-referencing or where we find contradicting so-called claims so that some either Wikidata or them are in a mistake. And from this coloring, you can see that uh, the green one was where we could actually just improve theirs. And then uh, there were some conflicts. And we showed to them that, oh, look, if you give us your database, we will do this consolidation and we will improve Wikidata with your data. And also when we find further information, we give it back to you. And they said that, wow, this is too complicated for us. So it was not that we didn't like the idea. Um, they are a very small institution with four people. And they found the task intimidating. But in two other countries, which were Slovakia and Hungary, um, where the music information centers are much bigger, by the way, they said, wow, this is a really great idea. So, so we, should, we should be doing this. So, so to a little bit refer back um, to yesterday, uh, the question like, okay, how, how you actually motivate GLAM institutions uh, to work with you to in, in improve content on Wikidata and Wikipedia, we actually showed them what the internet knows about the things that you care for. So this is what the internet knows about Lithuanian artists, and then they say, oh, but this is wrong. And then I would say, well, but then that's correct because this is why they are not getting paid, this is why the algorithm puts them to a wrong place. With music, you know, it has very hard consequences. If the algorithm mixes you up with somebody else, there was a Hungarian artist who was mixed up with a, with a, uh, a rapper from Thailand. And his music is recommended to rappers in Thailand, they will say, hmm, this is not a good music. They switch it off and it will have a negative record on Spotify. And the other way around, I mean, if uh, this Hungarian artist's audience gets uh, hip hop from Thailand, they will say, well, this is not relevant for us. So, so actually, uh, correcting these things is important. And then, there's also another idea that, that we realized. Uh, so this is a slide that I took from a different conference. When I was in that conference in February, Europeana, who knows Europeana, by the way? So Europeana is supposed to be uh, a hub that collects uh, digitized uh, 
cultural heritage of Europe into a semantic system. Of course, it's independent from Wikipedia and Wikidata, but I think it works on a similar technological background. At that point, Europeana had 200,000 musical works in its catalog, while Spotify received 200,000 per day. So, Spotify is receiving as much data in, in one or two days as Europeana over 10 years. But still, Spotify often refers to European on Wikipedia because it gets different data. So we were thinking like, OK, how could we exchange? So the private sector has tons and tons of data, but they still need to rely on open graphs many times. So is there a way to exchange? Because imagine if Spotify would grant some of this data to European, then we would have like a, a new European in music. And so, generally, that is, that is a more conceptual idea that the European Union is placing a lot of um, effort into making uh, government-sponsored scientific and uh, government-created data sets interoperable so that they can enrich each other, they can connect with each other. And there are new rules which are just going into force now, so there's not a lot of practice, that you can also on a voluntary basis add private data to that. And so I often hear very skeptical voices that, oh, why would a company give valuable private data away? But I'm always thinking about exchanges, that the company is also needing something that it would cost them a lot of money to acquire so let's exchange. And this is um, generally the concept of so-called data sharing spaces, which is also a new European Union idea, endorsed idea. Um, my small startup is a member of the um, Big Data Value Association, which is together with GaiaX, that's another technical body. We are working out ways of creating these data sharing spaces where, for example, an organization like Wikimedia, a governmental organization like a Slovak Music Information Center and a private company, for example, Record Labor or even Spotify could exchange safely data. Now, the European Union for public services already defined in 2017 criteria how to do it in four layers. So there has to be a legal interoperability. In my case, it means that I already see that some of the data is faulty in the library because I can access what the artist gave to the copyright registry when they made the work and somebody even checked their passport and everything that this is the right person. But how am I allowed to tell the library that I know that your data is wrong? Because this data is... Um, Protected. So, on legal interoperability, we're finding out legal ways how to do it. The organizational interoperability is, I think, even more important because for legal interoperability, you need lawyers. We have lawyers if somebody needs help, but this is difficult. But the organizational is, is something where you can get creative. For example, as a Wikipedia in residence, because it is just thinking through like, how a person is using data while registering a new work in a collective management society, for example, like GEMA in, uh, in uh, Germany or HDS in Croatia or Artisus in Hungary, and what, for example, librarian does with the same data. So often, even if they would have the legal clearance to exchange the data, they cannot really speak with each other. A librarian thinks about the library catalog. A rights manager thinks about a copyright registry. For us, as data scientists, they're talking about roughly the same thing, but not really the same thing. So this is a little bit when Christos was talking about ontologies. Um, we try to understand how a library uses the very same data that a music register uses, or an authority that gives uh, funds to music musicians. And we come up with joint workflows. Now we will have hopefully a beautiful example of this that will make it much clearer than my 
probably two abstract words. We are creating a non-profit record label. Um, this non-profit record label will be available for self-releasing artists whose repertoire is not valuable enough for Warner Music or these big companies to distribute them worldwide. We know that there are tiny labels that put their music on Spotify and YouTube and that they make a lot of times many mistakes with the data. I mean, that is where we start. So what we will do is that we will ask these artists to bring their new music into a library because a librarian knows how to work with metadata. The librarian will put the music into a public library system so all the public libraries in the country and eventually the world will know about this music and at the same time, in a very correct format, gives it to the distributor who will put it on Spotify. So I want to create workflows where actually this collaboration from the birth of the data can serve a public and a private function. This requires a so-called semantic interoperability, which I don't want to go into details, but roughly it means that the same information is understood the same way between a librarian a rights management, and somebody who's promoting your catalog on Spotify or doing uh, marketing activities for you on the web. And then there's the technical interoperability on this, which is well, what we are doing as open source developers. So this is already kind of conclusions. So we are searching for innovative pathways to making the European interoperability framework go beyond public services. It was designed almost 10 years ago to make public services communicate with each other. So a lot of uh, governmental services like, I don't know, your, the way you get your passport and what you can do with your password. It was designed for this, but eventually we would like private services to connect to these digital public goods. And uh, there are new laws how to make this. There's the Data Governance Act. There are specifications to share data, data intermediaries. I could have put here the AI Act because uh, also, if you think about it, we were starting from an AI problem that why is the Spotify algorithm giving a bigger highlight to American musicians than Slovaks. So what is the bias of an algorithm? We want to connect also to the development of new or improved standards in describing music. And then eventually, I think this is this is probably what might be interesting for the, the Wiki uh, media movement in the future is that we want to shift from simply reusing what we find in a Glam institution, in a library or a museum, into participating in data creation from the beginning. So instead of asking the library to share their catalog, well, let's try to come up with an open catalog standard that whenever a new book comes out, we both see it. I think that's, uh, that sounds futuristic, but I think uh, we have a chance of achieving this with an important use case, and that is registering music works. So I will try to persuade, it will take about a year, the global organization that handles the registration of music for copyright protection to participate in this, um, which is, of course, not books, but at least it could be a start, that there would be a registration process there. Some of the information immediately gets in a public infrastructure. Actually, for the commercial benefit of those who want to utilize these copyrights. I mean, if these systems know wrong information about my music, then my copyright will be worthless because nobody's playing my music. And uh, I will now conclude and give it very shortly over to Matei. So, as a kind of a recap, we're building a Slovak music data space which will technically run on different Wikibase instances where we are placing uh, data from different Slovak sources about music. 
whatever this, the, the union of this data that might become public will go into a so-called Slovak comprehensive music database which will place on the data and with face cloud. For the rest, there will be a lot of data that shouldn't go public and we will keep it that way. But this music data space will at least allow the organizations to, for example, find errors and correct each other's data. And I think this is a very strong motivation to bring private data owners here. So if you are a rights management organization, your biggest single cost item is cleaning your data. If we can do it for free for you, that's good for you. And in exchange, we want to make some of your, your data public. And so we will do this in Slovakia, and we will start in Hungary, originally wanted in Bulgaria that failed probably in Poland, uh, new data spaces. So we will just replicate the very same thing. And the federation would be that when we have a critical mass, we want to do this in a European level and place it into a wider music observatory, which will have very different type of data, statistical data, and other things which I will not talk about. And uh, this is roughly the application layout for the technically minded, I will answer questions if you have them. Um, and I just rather would like to give the floor to Motai to bring this down more to the level of practice. <coughs> Thank you, I'm Mate, and I've gone on board with this project kind of recently, but but still I'm happy to be here. And my role is kind of to bring the Wikipedia and Wikimedian perspective into the whole thing, right? So the idea is to, as uh, Daniel already mentioned, is to connect the data that is shareable, right? That is both legally shareable and factually shareable into Wikidata and Wikipedia, right? So that's basically kind of the why of my existence here, right? And as we do that, or even before we do that, or in order to do that, we need to get the okay from the community, right? So that's kind of the, the idea here, right? We can't just start putting stuff on and in before we can solve, right? The other thing that I'm supposed to do here is the documentation, right? So that the later generations <laughs> will know what is happening, what has happened, right? Daniel already talked about Vodomne Centrum, right? But just to give you maybe a little more perspective, the mission of this Vodomne Centrum, or music center, is since 1999 to encourage Slovak music, right? <laughs> That's what they say directly on their website. What does this encouraging mean? Right. They go through different paths to achieve that. One of the things they do is publish stuff about musicians, about composers, about musical ensembles that are created and exist in Slovakia. Right? Promoting, right? So going to con or organizing concerts, organizing events, and so on, and documenting all of these, right? Musicians, composers, singers. Right? So all of these kind of forward-facing and public-facing things are sort of combined into this encyclopedia that they have. It's kind of their little, you know, Wikipedia, you might say, of musicians, ensembles, and so on. So, so if I click, I should be able to click this, should be a link, no? Oh, it's not. It doesn't work like that, huh? Okay. So maybe I'll just open the uh, browser here and show you how much time do you have? Minus three minutes. Yeah. Minus three minutes, oh, okay, right. <laughs> it's, not oh. it's not so many minutes, but let's see. Um, so just want to show you this kind of thing here, right? When you click on this uh, about Slovak music, right, you can look through composers, right? For example, you can look through performers, right? And whenever you click on somebody, right, you get a bit of a bio, right, a little bit of where they studied, biography, right, discography, awards, and so on, right? So it's already fairly 
nicely organized, has, a good, has good information, so on, right? So now the idea is how do we connect this kind of thing to Wikipedia and Wikidata, right? So part of the things that we talked about already is the data kind of uh, organization, right? Let's go back to the slide show, slide Right? So one of the things we could do is do the data, Wikidata way, right? But the other thing we could do is the Wikipedia way, right? So talk about the text rather than the statements and properties, right? And here is where we still have some uh, you know, negotiation and some uh, fine tuning to do, right? To see if we should actually move the text that they already have into Wikipedia, right? Or if we should do some kind of template um, linking, right, where we link Wikipedia through Wikidata to their encyclopedia that already um, exists, right? As you already know, right, we can do infobox filling completely through Wikidata, right? Some Wikipedias already have this. It's already working. But some Wikipedias are a bit more, let's say, conservative, right? They don't want that. They want to keep the info box on their pages. So we'll have to do a bit of community engagement agreement to see what can happen, what could, could happen. Should, could, might happen, right? How can we organize this together? So that's in kind of a nutshell what my role is going to be, what's, uh, what's going to be happening soon. Questions, comments about that? Any reaction? No, no, I have a question for all of us. Or questions for us all, and Christos maybe wants to do So I, I, I didn't really see a com commercial conflict, but how you reserve, so what do you do with rights of personality and personal rights related to the people in the catalog? That's a huge, huge, huge topic. So do you get in touch if there's something, or Jacob, last words? <laughs> Uh, because I have uh, colleagues who are musicians and we have been discussions 20 years ago when there was a super successful open source label that was number one in charts in Croatia and this uh, collecting agency was actually really nasty to them and they kept uh, charging 
spaces that were explicitly playing David Cohn's music and artists. Uh, how will you manage this diplomacy between this super tense, uh, kind of super polarized, uh, at least historically, relations? I don't know if today it's as bad as that. But I know a lot of punk uh, techno clubs were super upset with these people in agency holding monopoly on how they distribute money, how they uh, give visibility, and who would trust them now to manage any kind of information about them? Because there's a camera on, I'm, I would suggest that we take this to the coffee break because yeah. I was working in Croatia for several years <laughs> and I have an opinion on this <laughs> which I think we can, we can share but generally speaking I think that that, um, that these issues can be resolved uh, in Europe and the further you go in the European Union, excuse me and then the further you go we try to bring on a partner from Armenia and well I mean, the problems with these kind of issues in Eastern Europe can be really troublesome. So it's, it's a little bit country by country, but I'm very happy to, to discuss this because especially I have Croatian experience and a lot of Croatian friends suffering from this. <laughs> And of course, we are here in the coffee break or later, so please contact us with questions. 